texted him a while back with a, with a note said, I, I got a harebrained idea, man. What do you think? He, do you want to maybe try to race a bagger? I was born into a Harley Davidson family, a motorcycle family. My grandfather, Harv Russo, started a Harley Davidson dealership in 1962. Our house was right behind the dealership, so the school bus picked me up and dropped me off at the front of the dealership every day as I, as I grew up, and it's been my whole life, you know, and pushed me into motorcycling from day one. It's pretty amazing to see now that Harley Davidson has has almost forced its way right back into my life without me deviating from my path in road racing. And that's a pretty special feeling. Right off the bat, I think the first conversation we had with Kyle, it was really about the sport of motorcycling more than it was just a bagger class or just a super bike class. And you know, here's a guy racing the highest spec super bikes in the world and unbelievably excited to come out here and do it on a bagger. He's just a passionate motorcycle guy. And I think from an industry standpoint, that's really beneficial to us. So Harley's always been around racing. Racing is part of the DNA of Harley Davidson, but there hasn't been a true factory team in a lot of years. Being an official factory rider for Harley Davidson is something I've always dreamed about. So being able to be part of, part of the crew that's coming back and bringing you know, racing back to Harley is, is really, really exciting. So there's only three different parts between the race engine that we're out here going as fast as a bagger's ever gone out on the track and the street legal version that you can pick up and buy in your Harley Davidson dealer today. We bumped up the compression a little bit on the pistons. We have a higher lift cam and higher flow injectors to feed it the fuel that it needs to run it. You know, we're working directly with the vehicle dynamics group of Harley-Davidson that design the street bikes and you can take all the work, all the experience that you've had and what you've built up and apply it to this. I don't know that there's a more capable product development group in motorcycling in the world than located right at home in Milwaukee and we've been able to tap into those resources and everybody's willing to give a hand and be able to step into the designing, the manufacturing, the testing, the assembly, everything that goes into putting a bike out here on the racetrack today. So Run this one until he gets okay. on it. Because okay. if he's full on it, he might be over that one. We have the resources to make changes and make parts and that's something that I've never had access to. Hearing, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, we're racing a bagger. Does that make a lot of sense to you? Being out here pushing that boundary, pushing the speed, keeping the engine RPMs up higher than we've ever seen, informs us about our next version of the Screaming Eagle product that we're going to be out there selling to the consumer. They expect me to get the job done on the bike and I expect them to show up with what we talked about and I think that that pressure being passed back and forth between myself and the team is, is a really healthy thing. A lot of people dream to be in that position but don't necessarily know what, what that means when the time comes. and. I feel like I'm prepared to get the job done for them and, and uh, that's, that's what I plan to do. These guys are not willing to, to fail, so they want to win as bad as I do and even if there have been moments where it's like, yeah, what have I gotten myself into, it's like quickly met with, no, we have a solution for this.